Alright, welcome back to a new Touch Designer tutorial. And in this one, we're going to look at subdivisions, or we could also call this uh, breaking apart 3D objects or 3D shapes. So, uh, what we are basically doing here is that we're inputting uh, different shapes. So, this box, or like a sphere, or like the super squat. And uh, then we're converting this data to uh, chops and tops, and then we're using that as instancing. And with some noise, we're like uh, sort of breaking this apart. I will show that uh, like in detail in a second. And then we're using some some input here. So boxes, we can also use like long boxes <laughs> or uh, spheres. So little balls. And um, yeah, that all works nicely. And uh, we're just using some, some rendering and, and shading with shadows to make this look nice. All right, so as, as usual, uh, I'm going to just delete all of this and we're going to start from scratch together. So let us start with the box. Just going to put down the box here and um, let's have a closer look at this. So I'm going to just uh, look at this from the side. Right now we, uh, so yeah, what we want to do here is we want to position a box at every point that we have. So those are not a lot of points that we have right now. So what we can do is we can uh, check type, uh, yeah, check these divisions. And uh, now we can see we have a lot more points uh, where we can position stuff. Let's increase this to 20. Oops. And um, damn, there we go. No. <laughs> Jesus, what's happening? There we go. Okay, not sure what happened there. Um, <laughs> weird. So we don't need any, any normals here. So right, we have 20 by 20 by 20 divisions. Um, you can if you want, like this isn't necessary. If you want to, you can uh, just go ahead and copy this parameter and pass the reference here. So whenever I change these divisions, it's going to be the same everywhere. So yeah, I would recommend doing that. What you can also do, for example, um, if you want to make these divisions react to, for example, the height of this. So if I change this to two, now we still have 20 divisions, but we would have to have, so we wouldn't technically need 40. Um, so we could just um, multiply this every time. We could also just type in times me dot par dot size why you can see the par name here um, and now it would be the same whenever I change it so you can do it for for these as well yeah so all right let's just go ahead and uh, add a transform and I'm just gonna make the whole thing uh, twice as big by changing the uniform state scale to two and I'm just gonna add a null here and from this null I'm going to right click and select SOP to chop. And from this SOP, I'm going to add a null as well, which I'm going to call pause for position. And um, I'm going to, we're going to come back here later, actually. And before we move on, so we see something, let's uh, create our render network. So I'm going to add a box and a transform to this box. And we're going to change the transform scale here to like 0.98. And uh, from here, we're going to add a geo. And a cam. And we're also going to need a light. <coughs> and um, a render top, of course. And we're going to change the resolution here to whatever we want to change it to. And I'm going to add a null by with alt G, no, alt N, right, yeah, <laughs> alt N, and uh, I'm going to call it BG, and turn on the display, and just add an RGB key, so we have a black background, so the, all the usual stuff, um, so let's go ahead to our uh, geo, uh, by the way, for the transform here, we need a zero before that, <laughs> so we have a small cube, um, Let's turn off the viewers for these. We don't need them. Um, for a geo, let's go to instance, turn instancing on. 
and use this pause null on the translate op. And now let's select the corresponding translations here. Let's move out with our camera a bit. You can just use the scroll wheel and drag this around. So something like this, uh, I don't know. So we can nicely see our whole box and this box is divided. So if you, if you were to change the uniform scale to 0.1, it would just look like a normal box, but now we can see all the divisions. We can also go ahead and uh, change our light a bit already. So we're gonna come back to this later, but this way we can, we can nicely see everything. Let's go to our geo and we can go ahead and uh, type in abs time dot uh, frame times 0.5 and now we can uh, have this circling around just so you know I'm going to turn that off though all right <clears throat> so let's get to the main part here which is uh, dividing uh, like uh, you know we already divided the box but now we want to like break it apart so we're going to use tops for this and then instancing again. So let's use a chop to top. And I would su suggest changing the data format to legacy. We don't need to do anything else here. Let's add a noise top and change the resolution. So we want to have one on the Y and we want to have the same on the X, uh, like on the, like the width that we have here. So in the same width and we have the width of 9261 here and that corresponds with the number of samples 9261 here so we could of course manually type that in but let's just type in op chop to one dot width width so it manually uh, dynamically adapts uh, and now let's use this and put it into the second input here. You can instantly see this changing. And um, let's change the pixel format to 32-bit float. And let's go ahead and um, not do anything here. <laughs> we can actually keep it on monochrome. Let's just add a null and call this um, scale. And go to geo instance and drag this onto the scale P. And now we again select the corresponding values R. Uh, no, actually, let's just select R for all of these. And like it doesn't matter if it's monochrome, but still, I would just suggest doing that. And now you can see we we get this sort of noisy box. So we can go ahead to our uh, noise and transform and type in abs time dot seconds times point one five or something. And uh, now this is animating, so cool. This is all working. But what we want to have is we we sort of just want to have the state. Is it like want to have the box be displayed or not? So I just want to have the state like here the the value of the scale zero or one. So if it's zero, there's not going to be any box. So let's add a limit top to do this. And uh, go to the quantize page or tab change this to round and now you can see if I drag this up we have fewer steps and if I drag this all the way to one we just have zero or one okay so now we can go back to our uh, noise maybe go down with the harmonics so if you go down with the harmonics it's gonna decrease the uh, little flickering here that you can see so I would go down to one and maybe change the period to around like six or something can even go higher you can go very high if you just play around as usual mm. and um, to make the uh, movement a bit more interesting we can uh, not only animate this on a z like because we're animating this on the, on the z-axis so it's just moving towards us in this space so from here to here <laughs> so let's um, go ahead like it's gonna be better if I now you can really see it. It's better visible. Um, so I'm going to just copy this, pass it in here, maybe change the expression slightly, and then like maybe minus 0.1. So now you can see it's a bit more of an interesting movement. It's not as uh, like directional. 
Okay, before we go ahead and use different inputs here and here, let's uh, add some shading because I want to make this look more interesting. So I'm going to add a Fong and uh, drag this on here, say Power Material, change the Diffuse to 1 and the Specular to 0. And um, for our light, let's actually copy and paste this. And I'm going to move a bit closer, maybe change it to that position. Also move closer here. So I'm going to explain why in a second. It's important to, to be close. And I'm going to like position it sort of on the other side. So we have two different lights that are illuminating our object. So let's go to light one and change the light color to like a slight red or something, whatever color you want to choose. And the other one to like a light blue. And maybe make this a bit higher, something like this. All right, so I'm going to select both of these, go to shadows and select shadow type soft to the mapped. And you can instantly see we get these shadows, which is cool. So we can maybe increase the max sh shadow softness to our liking, maybe point point 0.5, like point 0.4. Uh, and if your uh, GPU allows it, you can also go ahead and increase the shadow resolution. I'm just going to type in times two on both of these. It's going to make it look a bit better. So now again, I'm going to go back to our geo and enable our expression that we typed in earlier. So we can now have our thing rotated and now we can nicely see the uh, shadows in there. And now a nice little trick that I found out is uh, to make this nice look nicer it's just to go down with the constant into minus so now it looks a um, bit bit more dynamic somehow just play around with the positioning of of the light and um, yeah I kind of like that That's, that looks cool so it's close to what I had in the beginning all right now let's use uh, different, like choose different inputs here. So if we uh, select the sphere and put that in here, first it's going to be a bit too small. So let's just go up the radius to like point at uh, one point five. And um, the other thing is that you notice now, like it looks interesting with all the shadows, but what we have going on is that we just have like one layer, right? We don't have an inside of a sphere. It's really just the outside because you usually don't need the inside. Um, so the one way to go around is we, we can't add subdivisions here with like probably you can with, you know, subdivide here. Uh, so maybe just have a look there. I'm just going to use a little hack here and add a copy sub to this. Before I do that, I'm going to actually change the primitive type to polygon and go uh, up of the frequency to like 20. That really looks cooler. So you might want to just leave it this way, but if you want to have insides, you can uh, go go to this copy, maybe change the copies to 5 or something, and uh, change the uniform scale to like 0.8. So now we're just adding, so if we just, uh, just W here, you know, it's really hard to see now. <laughs> um, but well, what we're doing here is we're using this, we're, we're taking the sphere and just um, copying a smaller version off itself into itself. So if I go to a noise and I uh, go down with the offset, you can now maybe better see that we have these different layers going on. And uh, for the, the sphere, it might actually be nicer to go down with the uniform scale. I don't know, might be, might be nice. Try out different things. So that's one thing. The other thing I wanna show you is the super squad. So it's actually super cool. <laughs> uh, oh God. Um, so I'm going to just uh, use this and put that in here. So first again, let's change the radius on all uh, axes to uh, 1.5. So uh, it's the same size as before. We might want to change this to polygon as well and um, change the rows and columns to something higher, maybe 100. And now what we want to do, now it's just a, a sphere again, but now what we can do is we can uh, mess around with the exponent here. 
So let's actually go to our noise and go up with the offset so we really see what we're doing. And uh, now we can really play around with the uh, Z exponent. So it's really quite the interesting shapes that you get here, that you can see. So yeah, it's really quite cool. And then we can go back to our noise and change our offset to like maybe just 0.5 was good. And uh, so we're breaking it apart. For the uh, for the super squad, it actually even looks cool without breaking it apart. So you don't have to do that. Um, so two things I want to show you, and then we're done for this session with the session. Oops. So one thing is, uh, if we just go back to our uh, box here, we can, uh, after the limit, we can just copy and paste this noise and um, use this input instead and put that in there. And now we get this really interesting movement. So it just changes uh, like the, the scales in a really interesting way. So if you wanna go ahead and play around with that, feel free to do so can change anything about the noise here. So yeah, I really like that. And um, just let's just get go back to the state before. Um, and let's just copy and paste this box and put that in here and change the size uh, X to like 0.3 the size Y to 3 and the size Z again to like 0.3. So we get these longer like sort of sticks we can even make this longer. Uh, maybe change this to sphere and then we get this sort of interesting looking egg. <laughs> That's something that you always wanted to do. Probably, probably. Um, and the last thing is that we can, of course, just use spheres here as well. I would suggest, though, that you go down with the rows and columns uh, so you don't have like too many things for you, uh, your PC to calculate. So let's just put that in here and uh, maybe go also like down down with the radius to like, I don't know, 0.4 and um, change this to super squad or whatever so you can see the different inputs. Again, we can use the noise here. It's nice. Same here. Really, yeah, there's a lot of things you can do here, as you can see. So uh, yeah, that's it. Um, play around with the shading, lightning, uh, lighting with all the different inputs here and here. Play around with the noise and generally with this top system, because we're basing this on tops, um, you can even use feedback systems or feel free to mess around with that. Um, you can also go ahead and uh, change other things here like rotation or uh, coloring here. So yeah. Just make sure you always have the same number of instances. Uh, so this number. All right. Um, hope you like this tutorial. If you if you want to support me, if you want to have more videos, more stuff, uh, you can check out my Patreon. As always, it's linked in my description, uh, the description of the video, not my description. Um, and yeah, I, I'm really working hard on my uh, algorithm. So my little uh, life uh, performance tool software thing. Uh, so I'm not posting that much uh, generally, but uh, that's really exciting and it's gonna be it's gonna be really cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I hope you hope you're doing well in these weird times and I see you in the next video.